Welcome back to Uncensored. Joined in the studio by the Monday Night Pack, socialist and author Grace Blakely joins us again. Talk TV contributor Esther Crack, who also makes her way back into the studio. And comedian James Barr joins us too. Let's dice up some other stories from today then, shall we? It's a huge range. And let's start with gender, because that's something we never discuss. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gender. <laughs> the gender agenda. <laughs> gender neutral toilet clamp down. The Equalities Minister Kemi Badenoch, who's also Secretary of State for Business, has been very busy talking about toilets. Today here in the United Kingdom saying women will have their own toilets in all new non-residential buildings in a bid to protect single sex spaces. She said the proposals will ensure every building in England provides separate male and female or unisex facilities and they're going to publish guidance about it. What do you make of this, Grace? Oh, it's so pathetic from the government, isn't it? It's so obviously an attempt to distract from just the appalling job it's doing on almost every metric, from economic to social to cultural. And it's just a kind of, look over here, strategy, we're doing something about bathrooms. It's a bid to basically try and get people angry about something that is compared to literally almost anything else that is going on anywhere in our society, anywhere in our environment, anywhere in our economy, just not a big deal. I, I, when, I, when, I, when I read this, I just thought that's quite pathetic. Like, not, not in the sense that I, I disagree with that. You know, I like to have my own space. I, I've always thought that the idea of, you know, opening a pad, knowing that there's a man next to me, mm. I, I just don't like unisex toilets. So for me, it just, it, I've always felt uncomfortable with it. But I just thought the Tories must be so desperate. This is what they need to differentiate themselves. I from agree. The I think it's absolutely pathetic. Like, if they want to protect women, really, they should be doing something about all of the penises walking around number 10 Downing Street. <laughs> <laughs> Are the people attached to them? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, you can't, you know, protect against that with gender-neutral bathrooms, can you, James? Look, uh, do you not accept, Grace, that some people are worried about this? They are bothered by it? I think people are... Some people are bothered by it. Um, but if you look at the change that there's been over the last, let's say, like, five years, if you ask people five years ago, they said, basically, you know, I'm broadly fine with people doing what they want. I think most people have the same attitude of just, like, do what you want. It doesn't really affect me that much. I, I don't really think that much about which bathroom I go into. But now... This is my question. But, like, the, the thing is, is that now, after this five years of culture war, people do have more extreme attitudes about it. And that is what culture war agenda issues are supposed to do. They're supposed to push people towards extremes and make us fight over something that doesn't matter mm. so that we don't pay attention to the issues that do. I mean, I do agree. We're not paying enough attention to the things that matter. I just... You know, I, and I get it. Like I, I, like I said, I personally don't like unisex toilets, I despise them. Is that something that I would... Legislate? Would you vote on that basis? I would vote on that basis, exactly. I should qualify, it's not legislation, it's guidance. Um, but, uh, James, is it just the fact that we're all quite young, the four of us here? There are other people in Britain that think differently. Uh, no, I think it's exactly what we've all been discussing, actually. I think we it's happen to be right. right. I think <laughs> we're all right. right. Uh, yeah. Honestly, like, oh, you know, transphobic hate crimes are up by 52%, I think, or even higher. Um, two LGBT people were stabbed outside of a gay mm. bar in London yeah. this weekend. The stuff that they say is having a real effect on people's lives and they don't care. That stabbing was particularly concerning. It was in Clapham over the weekend, yeah. uh, two gay men near a pub. Um, and let's talk then about this. NHS boss is telling emergency workers to avoid using the words sir or madam. Now, I know we've all kind of said that we're kind of tired of this cultural distraction. Uh, this one does strike me as a little odd. NHS bosses have told 999 operators to avoid calling people sir or madam in case they upset trans patients, because to my limited understanding of not being a trans person, they wouldn't really mind if they were called sir but or madam. But you know what's interesting about the story? This was across many emergency uh, services. So it wasn't just like sort of one, you know, NHS emergency service in sort of one county or whatever. It was across many. So I just thought, wow, that's strange. Do you have not more important things to worry about? I mean, I mean, it's, that's very strange. Anyway, um, it's ridiculous. I, I don't think, think, think it is actually. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's not because, quite, you know, women's voices, men's voices can get confused anyway. Like I've been confused for being a woman on the phone. So it's kind of offensive yeah, to everyone. And, you know, for example, Rishi Sunak sounds like a douche. <laughs> you know, we all sound different. I think it's important. I mean, but the thing is, you're calling 999. If you're, if you're in a life-threatening situation, I'm sorry, like what the person, the person's assumption of your, of your gender identity... I just identity can't wrap my head around why anyone's being sense. called sir or mad in a life-threatening situation. I'd just be like, hi, I'm an emergency, <laughs> can you help me? Not like, yes, sir, or yes, madam. It seems like a waste of syllables exactly. in a time I mean, yeah, pressure sure situation. Yeah, exactly. let's, let's move on to other people which you may also consider to be douchebags. Uh, James, <laughs> Elon you. Musk and <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, yeah. Are we allowed okay. to say douchebags? Yeah. yeah, I think we can it's say douchebag. douchebag. It's nearly nine. I love a douche. <laughs> you know what? I mean, a douche is actually <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's maybe not have that let's conversation move on right from now. That. <laughs> the, look, Mark Zuckerberg has hit out at Elon Musk for wasting time over a cage fight, saying it's time to move on, while Musk has hinted it could take place, the supposed cage fight in Rome's Colosseum. 
Chelsea and the two social media tech giants have been floating this idea of a cage fight for ages. In my mind, it's just all attention seeking was never going to happen. It's so stupid. Like, it's just <laughs> yeah. so dumb. And I mean, it would be stupid even if we weren't in this situation now where, you know, Elon Musk has effectively ruined Twitter, like sent, you know, users numbers through the floor, sent advertising revenues through the floor. It, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's obviously not a great guy. Like I saw a tweet the other day, ironically enough, saying that the worst thing that Elon Musk has done has made Mark Zuckerberg by like comparison look like a relatively okay guy, mm -hmm. which I think is probably true. Do you agree with that, James? Yeah, I think if Mark Zuckerberg wants Elon to change his mind, if he wants to influence him, he should just pick up the phone to his old friends at Cambridge Analytica. I'm mm -hmm. sure they could uh, get Ooh, Musk get, in the ring. Yeah, or we'll just get him nice. his number. Look, at the end of the day, <laughs> I've always said, with at least with the Elon Musk and Twitter thing, he's too close to it. And now I've seen like I've I've, I've seen too much of the frat boy mentality. Like, oh, I feel like changing this. I'm gonna it's a, treat it like a Game Boy and just tweak mm. it. So I'm like, I've seen too much of Elon Musk to be like. Mm. They well, are basically what, narcissists. But that because, is yeah, but the, the whole the whole because apparently it's for charity, and apparently the mayor of Rome has ruled out them doing it in the Colosseum because it's it's closed for renovation. <laughs> so that's not going to be happening. Look, whilst but, whilst we're in the Mediterranean, I want to get your view on this, Esther. Tipping in restaurants in the Riviera, some of the hot spots the most exclusive restaurants. They've got secret dossiers on customers who don't leave generous tips. And uh, well, that's too bad. Pay your staff properly. Don't expect customers to subsidize your uh, staff's wages when you don't want to. I mean, if you're in the French Riviera, you can afford a tip, can't you, Grace? Yeah, I find it. How is this going to be enforced? Like, are they exactly. literally going to have people's are they gonna spit pictures the food? on the wall? Like, it just seems a bit weird. But I mean, yes, obviously people should tip, especially because, you know, a lot of uh, restaurants and places will say, we'll just pay people the lowest possible wage. Mm. I mean, that James, is generally what... Are you a keen you. tipper? You know I love it when guys give me the tip, so I am all <laughs> for tipping. That is all I we've didn't got hear that. time I for here that. in the studio <laughs> this Monday on Piers Uncensored. <laughs>